Hello, this um, podcast is going to be an introduction to gases and also an introduction to the concept of pressure. All right, first let's talk a little bit about um, some characteristics of gases. First thing, gases expand to fill their containers. So if you take the lid off the container, they will expand to escape the container. Um, they are fluid. They do flow over one another. Uh, they have a very low density. That means that they are very, very spread out as compared to um, solids and liquids. They are compressible, so we can force the molecules to get closer. And then they also um, effuse and defuse, which we will talk about in a later podcast. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the Kelvin scale of temperature. <clears throat> now, we've already talked about temperature as a measure of the average kinetic energy of all the molecules in a sample. And we know that the energy, the kinetic energy, really just means that the molecules are moving. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Now we're fixing to talk about why the Kelvin scale is so important. Kelvin is what is commonly used in um, science, especially when we're talking about gas laws. When we're talking about gas laws, we're talking about movement of the particles. Um, and none of the other temperature scales actually correlate to the pressure scale. Now, when molecules move, they run into one another and they run into their surroundings, their container. This, these collisions uh, exert force on the molecules. This force is known as pressure, okay? So pressure is force per unit area. So the force is the collision of the molecules and the area would be the container that they are in. Now, when we're talking about having no kinetic energy, like zero Kelvin, absolute zero, then we would expect to have zero pressure. And that's exactly what you see on the Kelvin scale. None of the other scales of temperature have that direct correlation to pressure. So zero degrees Celsius is not zero atmospheres. It's not zero pressure. So they don't correlate like the Kelvin scale does, which is why the Kelvin scale is so important. Now to get from Kelvin to Celsius, we'll use the equation K equals C plus 273. K is any temperature you have in Kelvin. C is any temperature you have in Celsius. So if you were given something in Celsius, you would put it where the C is, add 273, and that would give you to Kelvin. If you had Kelvin, you would put it where the K is, subtract 273, and that would get you to Celsius. So let's see some examples. So in this one, it says how much is 305 Kelvin in degrees Celsius? So we know that if it is Kelvin, we're gonna put it in the K spot. So K equals C plus, plus 273, okay? And then we would subtract 273 from both sides, okay? And that would tell us that in degrees Celsius, the sample is, let's see, 305, so that'd be 2, so 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then you do the exact opposite if you're given a, a value in degrees Celsius, which is what will happen most often in our gas law problems. So most of the time you'll plug it in for the C, and then you'll add 273. So 12 plus 273 gives us 285. Okay, so that's 285. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So for gas law equations, remember, you want to use Kelvin. All right, so the ideal gas law is an equation that allows us to relate the pressure, volume, temperature, and amount of a gas. And so if we know, um, if we know several of these variables, it can help us find an unknown variable. All right, so um, P is for pressure. Pressure is going to be in a unit called atmospheres. V, that's your volume. Volume is going to be in liters. N, N stands for moles. So, yep, guess what, guys? Moles are back. R is a constant. It's the ideal gas constant. It's always going to be 0.08206, and then it's got all these crazy units behind it. Okay, but that's always going to be its value. 
And then T is for temperature, and temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, so um, for this example, if you have a sample of a gas that has a pressure of 2.4 atmospheres, so that's definitely um, our pressure, and a volume of 1.2 liters, that's our volume, temp of 12 Celsius, how many moles? So I've got P. V equals NRT. All right, so my pressure is 2.4. My volume is 1.2. I need moles, so that's my X. R is always 0 0.08, 206. And my T. Hopefully you notice that my T is in Celsius, and I got to get it to Kelvin. So to go from Celsius to Kelvin... We add 273, so that gives me 285K. All right, so I'm gonna multiply these two, and I get 23.3871, and it's still multiplied by the X, so I'm gonna still put the X there. And then 2.4 times 1.2 gives me 2.88. Now to get X by itself, I need to divide by the 23.3871 on both sides of my equation, cancels over here, and gives me that my x is equal to 0 0.123 moles. All right, now in this example, um, I'm given a mass, um, and then I'm told my volume is 3.6 liters, so there's my volume. My temp is 295K, so there's my T. My pressure is what I'm looking for. Okay, so I got my equation, PV equals NRT. Pressure is my X. Volume is 3.6. All right, now N, my moles. So I wasn't given moles, I was given... Um, Grams, So I got 13.2 grams over one. I got to get this thing to moles. The only way to get it to moles is to use the molar mass of NH3, which if you added it up would be 17.034 grams in every one mole, which means I have 0.188 moles in my sample. So I'm going to plug that in. So 0.188. And then R is 0 0.08206. And then my T is 295. All right, so I need to get all of these um, multiplied together over here. And I get 4.551. Um, and then over here, um, I don't know why I put an equal sign there. Sorry, guys. It would be 3.6X. Now get X by itself. Divide by 3.6 on both sides. Cancels over here. And X ends up being 1.26. And since this is pressure, we know we solved for atmospheres.